Hey, what's going on? It's Takuya here. I've got an uh, Apple Silicon M1 MacBook Air two weeks ago, and I've been using it for my app development. So I'd like to review this new MacBook Air uh, from an app developer perspective. I'm a solo developer of Inkjob, which is a Markdown note-taking app that can run on both desktop and mobile platforms. As you may know, Apple introduced a new generation of Macs that come with uh, their first ARM-based chip for Macs called M1, November 2020. This M1 chip has incredible performance and power efficiency in comparison with Intel chips, and it is the combination of more than a decade of Apple's work on chips created for the iPhone and the iPad. Uh, so I'm super excited to have it for my app development. Apple also released Rosetta 2, which is a translation layer that allows programs compiled for Intel machines to run on the M1 chip. Uh, so we can run x86 apps without updating them by their developers. Uh, thanks to Rosetta 2, my app in flawlessly run on the M1 chip, as you can see. And since, and since the M1 chip has the same CPU architecture as the iPhone and the iPad, it can even run the iPad version of Inkjob on the new Mac, which is fantastic. <coughs> well, let's talk about my experience on coding on this new MacBook Air. Uh, to get straight to the point, you can use the M1 Mac for developing web apps, electron apps, and even React Native apps. But there are some issues you have to solve to get your development toolset to work on it. And of course that depends on which tools your workflow requires. I'm going to talk about how I solved the issues I got on uh, using my toolset. Uh, those who are subscribed to my channel may already know that I'm usually using NeoBeam on Terminal for coding. Uh, when I got this laptop first, uh, I tried to install NeoBeam. Unfortunately, uh, the M1 MacBook didn't let me install it right away with Homebrew. Uh, I found that NeoBeam developers have already worked on it and you can install it like this. Uh, so you can install NeoBeam by adding a parameter dash dash head. Uh, but it failed with this error. Uh, looks like a dependency tree seeder was failed to build, so I had to install it from head as well. Then it succeeded to install tree seeder, but next RuaJet failed to install. So you have to install it also from head. Now try installing NeoBeam again. Now I've successfully installed NeoBeam. It works flawlessly uh, without any issues so far. When it comes to web development, I didn't get any issues with my projects because Node.js 15 runs natively on the M1 chip, which is great. Uh, Weber compiles my project fine, so I think the M1 Max work fine for most web front-end projects. So you don't have to worry about that. And uh, about Electron, the desktop version of Inkdrop is built on top of Electron. It is currently based on V7, which is kind of old and uh, is not working on the M1 chip. I found that Electron 11 uh, officially supported the M1 hardware. <clears throat> so I tried updating it to the latest version and then it worked natively without Rosette 2, which is fantastic. On top of that, uh, on the M1 chip, my app launches so fast without V8 snapshots. Electron apps launch speed tend to be slow because they need to load a bunch of JavaScript files. In order to reduce the loading time, you have to leverage V8 snapshots. Uh, which drastically improved my app's launch speed. Uh, I found that my app launches so fast on the M1 MacBook Air even without V8 snapshots, which means that when you build your electron app for the M1 chip, uh, it will launch as quick just as V8 snapshots enabled. <coughs> the mobile version of Inkdrop is built on top of React Native. At the moment, React Native still has a big issue when, uh, where Android emulator doesn't support the M1 chip yet because the virtualization engine called uh, Intel Haxen uh, cannot run on it. I tried to install Android Studio, then I got this emulator error, which means you cannot build Android apps at the moment. Uh, but I guess it will be coming soon as they've already rolled out a preview of the emulator uh, running on the M1 chip. It still has a lot of limitations. Uh, as you can see, I can't use this preview because my app needs web view working, uh, but it doesn't work yet. On the other hand, uh, Xcode and the iOS simulator work fine. 
The app runs flawlessly on the iOS simulator, but there were uh, some issues to get it to work. I got the following error when I ran Cocoa Pods to install libraries. That's because a Ruby gem called FFI doesn't support the M1 chip yet. Uh, to solve it, you have to run Cocoa Pods using Rosetta 2 by adding uh, ac x86 64. The Cocoa Pods developer says that uh, they will remove the dependency on FFI in the future, so it will be solved sometime soon. Next step is to configure your project for the M1 Mac. Uh, when I compiled my project with Xcode 12, it got this linker error. I found this comment on GitHub saying, uh, this issue has started coming up with Xcode 12 and support for the new ARM-based Macs, as ARM64 now no longer can be assumed to uh, only be for iOS devices. This means Xcode 12 uh, will now also build for ARM um, 64 simulator SDKs, and it has become ambiguous if an X slice in a pre boot binary is meant for a simulator or device. So, this is a difficult description, but uh, so all you have to do is change the project setting to exclude ARM um, 64 uh, when building for any iOS simulator SDK like this. Uh, simple. And then create a build cache by hitting Command Shift K, then repeat it. And it worked. Fantastic. And next, uh, what surprised me is its build speed. I have a 2090 Mac Pro here, uh, which I use every day for all my creations. And, but surprisingly, so my 1600M MacBook Air builds my Xcode projects way faster than I expected. Uh, here is the build speed comparison with my Mac Pro on the upside here. As you can see, the M1 Mac is doing very well, which is incredible. So if you are an iOS app developer, you will never need to pay $13,000 for a Mac Pro for your development. Uh, with that being said, I still need this Mac Pro because it has a 96GB RAM uh, which lets me do a lot of heavy tasks such as running Windows and Linux virtual machines at the same time for building and testing my app. Uh, I use Parallels for the virtual machines, but it doesn't support the M1 chip officially yet. I'm looking forward to seeing what Apple will release next. If all the issues that I discussed got solved and I Apple released another M1 Mac that comes with much more RAM, uh, I will be happy to switch my main machine to it. So overall, uh, the M1 Mac is mostly usable for my app development, so I'm happy with what Apple has done. Anyway, I hope you guys found this video helpful and see you in the next one. Peace.